Getting to know Nutrien tonight, catching up. Uh, well, it is, yeah, it is definitely tonight. Um, M. Yo, um, firstly, M. Welcome to Campbell's comments. I've spoke to you quite a few times, but welcome. And what is your official title at Nutrient? Oh, well, my official title is um, Nutrient Admin Standard Brand at the moment. Um, so I assist Mark Barton, who, um, who runs Nutrient Equine Standard Brand, and I assist him with um, some marketing and admin, And um, but I work remotely. So I work from my home at Bulladilla on the mid-north coast. And... Um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing, and I help out with the website and social media, and um, and working with vendors. Yeah. Mid north coast of New South Wales. Yes. Yep. So we're probably about, uh, I think, about forty minutes north of Newcastle. Yeah. Yeah, on a farm. Yeah. Do you enjoy your job? Yes. Yeah, it's great. Well, I work from home, so I'm on the farm. I've got a little bloke. His name's Jack, and he's five. And uh, my husband and I have a sheep farm. And you also you also do a little bit of media as well, you guys as well. You've got your own production company as well. Yep, we um, we have a, a production company doing mainly equine sports, but we also do rural live streaming and video um, production. We do a bit of photography, and that's how we started working with Nutrients. So I met Mark Barton um, about ten years ago, or a bit over ten years ago, and so this is um, yeah, it's been about that long that I've been working with him and doing everything from. Uh, photography to the video and um, and now some admin. So yeah, really enjoy working with the Nutrient team and um, and very excited about going into the standard brand industry. Give your company a plug. You're you're free to give it a plug. It won't worry. It won't worry me one bit. But um... oh no no that's all right. Um, yeah. So I've got Wild Cold Productions, which is um, our production company, and then we have a platform called Australian Equine Network. And that has all the equine disciplines. So Wild Colt um, goes around and videos lots of different things. We work with the land. We do auctioneer competitions, um, bull sales, sheep sales, and um, and a lot of a lot of horse events. Yeah. And it's all changing. It, it changes all the time now. Like uh, with with COVID, yeah. COVID and the, and the likes, it's become a very different world, I suppose. And I suppose your your business has had to evolve, as has Nutrients. Talk about yeah. talk about a baptism of fire coming into, and we can get onto the standard bread section as well. But right yeah. at the, right at the minute, you're in Tamworth, and I, be, I am. I believe at one stage it was a bit of a logistical nightmare, even getting this <laughs> sale up and going this year. Well, this is our fourteenth, uh, so Nutrients fourteenth uh, uh, classic camp draft and sale. So they sell stock horses and quarter horses, um, registered stock horses and registered quarter horses. Uh, this year, I think we've got I've got the catalogue here. We've got 596 registered ridden horses. Um, it's a pretty big event. I think we're, this year we're 10 days, and um, so they have a competition at the start, and then we have uh, pre works. Our first pre works was today, so we're up to day five, and then we'll have pre works again tomorrow, which means um, uh, vendors get 20 minutes, uh, about uh, 20 seconds. Sorry, is it 20 or 30 seconds? Is it? Two minutes, sorry. I've got the team here telling me how much it is. <laughs> Even though I have sat on the camera today all day videoing it, I couldn't tell you how long they've got, two minutes they've got. On a cow, um, they can have a cow if they want to and they showcase their horse. Uh, we live stream that. That also goes, so people are watching it online and then people also ringside. But yes, with COVID, um, it's been incredible. Like, you know, border shut. Like, we have people from all over Australia come to this sale. So it's um, been an absolute credit to the Nutrient Tamworth team. So Nutrient Equine is based out of Tamworth at the Tamworth branch. And that team, um, along with Mark Barton, who lives in Wagga, um, the credit to them for getting it all done, as well as ALEC. So ALEC is the Australian, Equestria, uh, Australian Equine Livestock um, Centre in Tamworth. Uh, which is where we are, and um, and that team work have worked really hard with all the government bodies, New South Wales Health and um, work workplace health and safety and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so they got a QR code on the Services New South Wales app, and we log in every day, and everybody's doing the right thing, and it's been great. It's been really great. Okay, let's forget COVID then, because. I want to understand how this sale works. You said you've been there for five days so far. Now people yep. are working the horses. Is that is that what you just you were sort of saying that yes. the, the, the owners go out and ride them? Is the people that actually own them yep. at the minute and putting them up for sale? They go out and actually ride them in front of people. 
in front of people. So we had a whole day of pre-work. So we did lot one, two, 317 today. Um, and if they've got, you know, some people have trainers, some people have, you know, they might have a syndicate, so they have someone riding their horse or they ride their own horses. Um, yeah, so they come in and, and work their horse for two minutes and the auctioneers talk about the horse, so they give them a spiel. Um, so they, and everybody sits there with their catalogs ring, ringside and um, there's a lot of traders here. So I'm not actually sure how many traders we've got here, but there's lots of shops um, have set up around the concourse. Um, I'll send you a little video if you like of the yeah. walk around so you can see the complex. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And um, lots of people come for the shopping. <laughs> and so there's, yeah, there's lots to see and, lo- and everybody's just really enjoying catching up. So we've got people from the Northern Territory, Western Australia, um, Victoria. I'm not sure if there's any Tassie people here, but um, definitely heaps of Queenslanders, um, South Australia. Yeah, ev- they've all been able to come and, it's just snagged that right time with the borders being open. Um, it's been perfect. So, so when, yeah. when does the auction actually happen? When do you start actually physically selling the horses? I know technically that's what you're doing right at the minute, but when do you actually physically sell no, them? No, no. Thursday. So Thursday morning at 8 o'clock, we kick off the actual auction, and then we have four days of auction. So they'll go from wow. uh, about 8 o'clock till about 4 o'clock each day. And um, it's a pretty electric atmosphere. So we this year we have um, online bidding um, with Auctions Plus, like what we yep. did with the Ready to Run. A little bit different to the Ready to Run, though. It's not a like it's actually a live auction. So we have ringside. Um, people will be phone bidding, and people will also be um, yeah bidding online. So we'll have our live feed go out which showcases the horses um, and then the auctions plus will have a live audio feed. So that's more up to date than our, our yep. you know, we can get a 30 second, depends on your internet, but up to 30 second delay. Um, whereas the, the audio feed will be live as well as, so we're telling people to have the auction open and then the webcast open so they can flip between the two and, um, and bid away. <laughs> uh, uh, the reality of that though is too, that people can watch you guys feed but when the lot number that comes up for theirs, they they, they know the, the delays there. People are made aware of it. That's the world we live in now. They lock onto Auctions Plus for the one that they want to bid on and, and go from there, but then go back to watching the others. And if they like one, they might tune in. They know they've got to pick up the slack there, that little bit of delay. Some people might not understand how it works, but effectively you just cannot send information that quickly over the internet, over anything. It, it, there is restraints. Yeah. And um, unless you've got a big budget like TV production companies, you can't do it. And yeah. quicker, so. Well, even they probably don't tell the truth. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Probably just say it's, say yep. it's live, but it's um, it's very um, yeah. So on our feed too, we have the lot number um coming through from Nutrien's um live catalog, so that will have the lot number. You know the the type of um you know whether it's a gelding and mare or a stallion, what age it is. So there'll be open age, two year olds, three year olds, four year olds. And it also has the sire and it also has the vendor and the horse's name. So that flashes through on the live feed direct from the Nutrient Equine um, system. System. Yeah. So, so logistically, it, it is there's a lot going on behind the scenes. It's not just you swinging off a camera and uh, I've had a couple of random, yeah. fo- random photos of M um, yeah. wrestling in this camera and, and the likes. So it is a two, yeah. it's a two-week sale and it is a dead set. There is something going on for that whole two weeks. Yep, so we started off with the camp draft. So they have an open camp draft, which is for um, people that can put their open horses in that have bought and sold at the Classic. Then we have the Classic camp draft. That's worth $50,000 to win um, first place. And that is for horses that are bought through the Classic that are under five. And then they have a smaller draft. Well, there's not as many entries, but they have a, um, a Masters, which is for horses that were bought through a previous classic that is um, their over five. And then they have some other drafts. Like we have a Young Guns draft. Nutrien's really, um, you know, all about supporting young people in the industry. So they have a Young Guns that's for under 25 that are bought and sold through the sale. So there's lots of different incentive um, drafts. There's a ladies draft. There'll be a geldings final. So that has really boosted people through the sales buying geldings. I hope that's for the horses and not the riders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just, well, you, as you, far as you, I know. <laughs> you, went, you, went from ladies, you went from ladies to the, the geldings. geldings yeah. so I was like, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, I'll just yeah. I'll leave that one alone. But, uh, yeah, um, no, that's it. 
And then we've got, um, oh, I have to see other drafts. I think, um, oh, and, and we're also running our National Camp Draft um, Council of Australia, which is all the different associations. They have a national rider series and they have been for the last, this is our second year running that competition at our draft. So that means that everyone gets in their team colours. So that's a lot of fun. It's quite a serious draft for, for those um, associations. But I know that everybody really likes to get behind their state. So there's a Gippsland, um, there's a Southern Camp drafting, which is sort of Southern New South Wales, Victoria, um, ABCRA is New South Wales, and then ACA is the Queenslanders. It's amazing. I knew it was on and I knew it was big, but I didn't actually understand it was that big. Campbell's comments yeah. is predominantly uh, harness people. There's your question page, which is opening up, and it's yeah. only small, but I'm sure you're going to open one or two people's eyes to actually how big yeah. big, big this event is and how much it means for Tamworth. I would imagine for the state government, it would mean a lot, like just with people coming in, mm. staying for that period of time, it must be massive for Absolutely. the Absolutely. We have a great relationship with the Tamworth Council. They've been really supportive and actually instrumental getting the, the draft to happen, um, draft and sale, sorry. And, um, yeah, so that's been really exciting. Destination um, New South Wales also supports um, the – and it is a great boost from the town. And I know that some of the sponsors like the Long Yard, which is one of the hotels down the road, they have a very good week. And um, we actually had all the drafts. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they have a great one. And so um, the draft got cancelled this afternoon because we had a really big storm late last night and um, the surface is not good. So they've actually postponed the, the draft from to, the finals from tonight will go to Thursday. Um, so I reckon the long yards will be the place to be tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's pretty keen after a few days of drafting to go and have a, have a few bevies. And sit, sit back and, and relax. I've actually got the... Yeah. Um, the standard bread, the nutrient standard bread um, yielding sale catalogue, which commences Saturday the 10th um, and Sunday the, the 11th. Yep. You're behind a lot of it. You said that um, yourself as well. There's a lot of great initiatives coming out about this sale catalogue. Before you go to that, how excited are you to be now, like you say about how big this Tamworth one is, one, stepping to standard bread something totally different. And, oh, totally different. And how you might, great. But how you might be able to grow it as well off the back of what you guys have been able to achieve with the Tamworth one? Yeah, we've got a really good team in Tamworth. Um, another girl that's working very hard on, on the back end of things is Clancy, and she's she's really dived in with Alan Parker, getting the pedigrees each and every week up to date. So um, each week, they Alan Parker will um, you know update all the pedigrees from the from the races, and they get updated online onto the online catalogue, which is free to to view. And if you've already got a printed catalogue, we've actually got a um, a QR code on the. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. There. Definitely can. On yep. the bottom of each each page. So you can just hover your camera over that and that will take you to that lot which will have the updated pedigree on it. So that's been a really exciting... We don't even do that for the Tamworth draft, which we're hoping to next year. That's been an initiative that's come come out for the set of bread. So that's exciting. And um, yeah, so no, it's really... It's going to be great and it's a whole new world for me but um, and the team, but we're throwing ourselves into it and getting some really good support from the industry. Can you see... It growing, maybe not for a two-week thing, but can you see, like, the Tamworth, I'm, I'm pretty confident the Tamworth Carnival 14 years ago, uh, the draft, oh. was nothing like what it is now. No, I think Did, it was two, I think it might have been three days. And when I first came on, I think we had five, five days. So, yeah, it's definitely grown even just in the last 10 years. Can you see the the harness race as I said, maybe not two weeks, but stretching out maybe for a one week of... Like everyone's... One of the things I hear a lot over here is, oh, what are we going to do next year when it's in New South Wales? And I'm thinking, mm. I reckon yeah. I, I reckon I got an idea. I reckon you're going to be travelling to New South Wales and, and watching it there, like, but... um, Or watching it online the way people are now. But can you see mm. it actually being able to grow in the way that the Tamworth one has? Yeah, I feel like Mark is definitely... That's something he's always talked to me about. It's... um. He's very uh, social, Mark, and he loves um, people and he loves entertaining people and also getting the best results for the vendors. And if you give people a good time and make sure that they um, they're enjoying what they're doing and what they're how they how they are, and it's it's actually making the sale an event um, and something that people want to go to, and that will bring people from outside the industry. I'm hoping, yeah. Well, I'm going. Yep. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's it's going to be a um, an exciting challenge to 
and we've talked a lot to to different people about how we how that happens and also working in with you know how how you guys do things as well so yeah it's cool it, it's, it is different and, and a lot of people are reluctant for change and don't like change. A lot of people don't like competition. Some people do like competition. Standard bred people are probably steadfast. They've been happy in their life for a long period of time. So I suppose you're going to get a few people that aren't happy with what you're doing and I imagine you've got other people that are really, really excited about what yeah. what what is on you know in the future. Yeah, I can understand that. And well, the feedback I've had from... Um, the people that I've been dealing with, out, like mostly vendors, obviously, has been been fantastic. So, I um, I'm excited to get their feedback, and um, and then I throw some ideas in as well as the, does the team. And um, it, I've really enjoyed working with the tech teams as well to to make sure that we can do some of these new things that we we wanted to. And and also with Alan Parker, we got feedback that um, people were really wanting to see the fourth pedigree. So he has taken that on, and um, and that's been really encouraging to see people loving that. And um, I think he does it for from I think he said to me from the US, Canada, like all that, like yeah, he he goes right right to in depth with it. Yep, and and that is that is key. And I think the one thing you just said then, you guys are listening. You're listening to what people want, <laughs> and not necessarily doing everything because. If you're going to adopt change, you can't do everything that everyone wants, which was the same as what it was before. So you have to be able to change things up. But if people wanted mm. the fourth pedigree, um, they wanted it. I, I think, yeah, you know, they probably could have looked at it themselves. But um, some a lot of people are saying, "Oh, you need four pedigrees up there," and and you guys have adopted that. It's not in the catalogue. You can't get it in the printed catalogue, yeah. but it's there electronically online. It is. Well, Alan said to me that they do it in New Zealand, but I think we're the first um, Australians. So um, that's exciting. It's exciting to have those new initiatives come through and and have the positivity, you know, come back from people to say that they're loving it. I'm really excited to get the videos and photos um, from people now that I went to um, Brooklyn Lodge the other day and um, they're getting their horses in soon. And it's, um, it's exciting to get back on farm now that, there's a bit of uh, relaxation in the in the COVID rules with with New South Wales, so um, hopefully we'll be able to do more of that and start getting them onto the online catalogue and um, showcasing these beautiful yearlings. It's funny I say about uh, people don't like change. A lot of the participants they're keen about the April sale date, but it's just thrown them yeah. a little bit out. They've got this little bit of empty time, like they're all ready to bring them back. Yeah. They're actually tonguing to bring them back in. I think it really works because. Oh, good. When, I noticed that Ian had a holiday and had his first Christmas off. Ian Johnson, I thought that was great. <laughs> yeah, and but I think they're waiting to bring them back in. They're excited to bring them back in. Instead of yeah. over that Christmas chore, they're like, how are we going to do Christmas with the kids and the grandkids and be able to yeah. do that juggle um, next year? A bit more forward planning and they'll be able to get around it yeah. a lot better. So I, I think there's some great exciting uh, parts. There's a few other things that hopefully we'll be able to get up with the catalogue. Um, we're not going to allude to them just yet, but... It's not just yeah. done and dusted. That's the one thing about it as well, isn't it? Nutrient that's still trying to grow. Um, the things you're trying to grow are yeah. very, very different and they're revolutionary as far as how a sale catalogue might work. Yeah, I mean, Mark and I always push the envelope with people. Um, you know, we're always coming up with, you know, wouldn't this be good to have? And um, we got the Google Maps on there so people could see where, where horses are. Yep. Um, you know, the addition of, of phone numbers that link through, they can definitely, you know, phone them by clicking their phone number. Dif- different things that we would like to happen. And um, sometimes the tech team comes back and says, that's one step too far right at this moment, but we'll get there. And so that's really been exciting and um, it will only get better. Absolutely. And one thing dealing with tech guys is um, I do quite a lot. Um, yeah. they, they say you can do something. But when they can't do it, they do do get grumpy. But they come back to it eventually. They it's it's a sort yeah. of thing. They wake up in the middle of the night and get it working. There's no hassles there. But um, some things take a little bit longer than that. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It won't be the last time you and I speak. Um, no, absolutely. I so I get some sleep and how, after this sale, that'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed it. I hope people have enjoyed the insight into what Tamworth Sale is actually about and how big it actually is because yeah. I think that'll blow a lot of people's minds, that's for sure. 
We'll, um, if they want to jump on just to have a bit of a squeeze, tomorrow night will be the classic final. So that's the $50,000 um, young, yeah, that's the big incentive. But it's the actual classic sale, which the, the uh, sorry, camp draft, which the sale is named after. So that'll be really exciting. And um, that final will be tomorrow night. And you can view it on nutrientequine.com.au and you click on performance instead of standard bread and you'll go to webcast. So, yep, that'll be live and it'll be pretty pretty fun to see from what time um i think the classic will be oh it's usually about seven thirty, eight o'clock or something yep. like that no good as gold mm. that, but that... i'll post i'll i'll get the so our nutrient admin girl for performance is darby and she um i'll get her to post it out when when we're up and running yeah that, it'll be good if posted on the standard bread site so people can go there and yeah. have a look and when does the actual sale em just left me nuts she's back when does the actual sale <laughs> when does the actual sale start em like like the actual yeah, sale thursday morning Thursday, yep, Thursday morning at 8 o'clock, yeah. And it'll be live streamed as well. So they go to the same website, they'll be able to go same in website. and watch it. A lot yep. of people like auctions. They like just watching and seeing how things do work and how they unfold yeah. in a different way. So it's a great, it's a sticky beak way. You can get away with it without anyone knowing you're sticky beaking. Well, with our live stream too, we have a full rewatch up of everything. So if they go there now, there's something for people to watch. And I'm sure that our website's going to be a hit this afternoon now that they all can't go down the down the paddock and have a beer and watch the drafting. They'll probably be at the bar with their phones out watching the live stream, which I've seen before. <laughs> <laughs> watching the rewatch, watching themselves go round and round again. <laughs> Emyo, thank you very, very much. Thank you. I've uh, really enjoyed it and uh, get, get to see a, a face. I'm going to get a few others. We're going to catch up with Ian Carmichael and a few others so people can see who is who they are dealing with. I think it's key um, to know their passion Fantastic. and also know the way they are. Em, thank you so much. It's uh, been a pleasure and uh, have fun on that camera. You've only got, what, another week of, camera work to go so you, you have some fun thank you so much